Uh, so when you drill the well board, um, let's say that we got a platform now somewhere over here. <coughs> You guys want to an offshore platform? Mm -hmm. No. Well, maybe I'll see if uh, if uh, somebody <coughs> wants to take you. I might have somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I might have somebody that will allow us to go to a hydraulic fracturing job in the south of San Antonio. I need to work on that, but I think that could be a, a fun uh, field trip. Uh, but. Uh, an offshore rig, if, if you go to Galveston, I, I strongly recommend you go to an offshore, to the Offshore Petroleum Museum. Uh, over there, they have an old offshore rig that you can go through and walk around. It's, it's a very nice place uh, to visit while you're in Galveston. Um, okay, so um, let's say that, that here uh, you drill a well board and you get into into this formation. In order to drill the wellbore, uh, you need your wellbore to be stable, first of all, right? Um, stability means that the wellbore is not going to break. And when the <coughs> rock breaks, that's when geomechanics comes into the picture. So more or less towards the, towards half of the semester, we're going to get into wellbore stability. You already had <coughs> drilling before, and you know the techniques about drilling. In wellbore stability, we'll talk about uh, more detailed uh, analysis of when a wellbore can be stable, and when it is not <coughs> stable, and how the rock fails uh, when it is not stable. Uh, sometimes there are locations where you already know how to drill through that, it's already straightforward, but especially when you get into new assets or when you go into very deep reservoirs, uh, wellbore stability might be a, a huge uh, concern. So we drill the wellbore, right? And uh, let's say we get to the wellbore, we actually verify there is soil, we run the logging tools, uh, we verify that, that there is soil in there, uh, and actually getting to the wellbore, we find <coughs> that permeability is kind of low. Uh, what what could you do in order to increase the productivity of the well? Fracturing. We could do it a small fracture. Uh, sometimes offshore it's not that common to do uh, big fractures, but that's going to come into the completions part. So here we can have fracturing. Uh, fracturing is going to be a, a <coughs> geomechanical uh, process. Their geomechanics is going to be uh, super important. Uh, for the example of fracturing, instead of doing it offshore, uh, let me actually come over here, and I'm going to to set up a, a well kit somewhere <coughs> over here onshore, where uh, let's say we are somewhere close to to San Antonio. I'm getting better every semester with making schematics of the uh, of long form. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> probably you get the idea, hopefully. <laughs> um, and uh, we have drilled a wellbore over here. We have cemented the wellbore. Uh, we're getting into this source rock. We extend the lateral, and in that lateral, we make multiple fractures uh, in order to increase the productivity of that wellbore. Uh, so that would be the part of uh, hydraulic fracture. Uh, so let's say that now uh, <coughs> you, you find oil, you got to the oil, you drill the wellbore, you completed your wellbore, what do you do after? You produce, right? You start producing, you lower the bottom hole pressure, <coughs> and uh, you start uh, production. But geomechanics is also going to be there. Uh, geomechanics is going to be important because as you produce 
reservoirs. Uh, we're going to see later on that uh, as you lower the pore pressure, you increase what are called effective stresses which is more or less the net forces that act on the solid skeleton of the rock. That increase of effective stresses cause, causes compaction, which is intimately linked with rock compressibility. <coughs> Let me ask you, is compaction good or bad? Why? Subsidence. Subsidence. Yes, you, you're, you're getting <coughs> into, the, into the right direction. So if you lower the pore pressure in this location, basically we want the fluids to go to the well bore, right? If you want the fluids to go to the well bore, uh, you have to lower the pore, the pore pressure. If you lower the pore pressure in an element somewhere over here, as we say, we're gonna increase the effective stresses, and you're gonna cause a compaction. This top of the sand is gonna go down. And if this top of the sand goes down, the seafloor also might go down. This is what is called Subsidence. Some people also call it subsidence. And that's generally, uh, <coughs> generally not good. Uh, for example, in, in California, in Long Beach, uh, there were many reservoirs that are relatively shallow. They're very thick, have a lot of compaction. Uh, with oil production, in the 50s, 60s, the surface went down uh, more than 10 feet, which is a lot. The surface, I'm talking, you know, Long Beach, very close to LA, surface goes down 10 feet. Uh, most times that's not good. Uh, in offshore locations, if the, the rigs uh, have foundations on the seafloor, sometimes you have to jack up those rigs uh, because they will go down uh, with time. So. Uh, subsidence generally is not good. Together with subsidence and, and compaction, uh, sometimes you have something which is called also uh, case shearing, which is if your rock goes down and your rock drags <coughs> your casing, at some point it might break. Sometimes it breaks in compaction, some other times it breaks into shear. So, but We'll get into details uh, later on. But compaction is not all the times bad. Sometimes it's also good. C can you tell me why compaction could be good? Um, consolidation of those sands. Yeah, and so? You don't produce the sand. Probably you remember from reservoir engineering about compaction drive. It's one of the mechanisms of compaction. It's like in sponge, right? If you can squeeze it a lot, you're gonna be able to reduce the pore space so that some of the oil that was in that pore space gets out of it just by a mechanical drive. Uh, and because of that compaction, it's not all the time bad, but also it can be it can be good. If you increase the stresses a lot, effective stress in the formation, because you lower the pore pressure. Sometimes also that's not going to be good because as you said, the rock is going to compact, permeability is going to go down. Pore uh, size and pores are going to get smaller. Fractures are going to close if they were open before. And sometimes the stress may be so high that rock is gonna to start to crash as you are producing. And as the rock crashes, you're gonna obtain some fines that go with the oil and gas. That's a phenomenon called sand production. It's not necessarily sand itself, but it's just fine pieces of rock that flow with oil and gas and get into the pipes and also may get into facilities. Uh, most time also that's, that's not good. You want to prevent that. But that is <coughs> all uh, part of uh, geomechanics. 
we have five more minutes, and uh, we have one more topic to talk about. What do you do after production? Let's say that uh, you were producing, let me increase the original holding place over here. And let's say that you did a primary recovery with <coughs> well -born, somewhere over here. And then later on, as you complete the primary recovery, you decided to start injecting uh, water to do a water flooding. Are you going to be producing just oil when you do water flooding? No. No, right? So very likely you're going to produce lots of water too. Even with primary depletion, you produce lots of water. Sometimes, you know, the water cap can be, can be quite high and still be economically viable. What do you do with that water? Is it injected? You could re-inject it, right? Mm -hmm. What about you have enough water to re-inject and you want to dispose it somewhere else? Uh, salt water disposal. Uh, and and what, what is that? What is salt water disposal? It's an injected mode in like a depleted reservoir or a brine region of earth. Yes, exactly that. So, uh, you may pay someone else uh, to do uh, water uh, disposal, uh, probably because there is a company that uh, is going to charge you much less or you're going to spend disposing the water. <coughs> you're going to take it and inject it somewhere else. So uh, let me also extend here a little bit the onshore section. Let's say that you pay a company that has a disposal well and is injecting uh, water into a location which is a reservoir, which is a saline reservoir that is very deep. And it's underlain by igneous rock. to this well board over here and now you're injecting <coughs> lots of water. Let me erase this, it's gonna be easier to understand. Uh, it's not the same example, okay? It's something else. And let's say that next to that well there is a fault. and you start injecting water 24-7. Do you see any issues with that? <coughs> Sleep or what? I, I hear a sleep. So what, what is going to sleep? The faults. Are you guys familiar with the seismicity uh, events in Oklahoma? That, that was caused by water disposal in the reactivated faults. Uh, the pore pressure goes down so high uh, that it lowers effective stress and that, that causes faults to reactivate. And that's also something that we're going to study in this class. So, all right, guys, uh, we'll continue on Friday. I'll see you at 1 p.m. Uh, please check the website uh, where there you have all the information that, that you need.